Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Welcome to Ask the Messengers. I am Lester Lewis, your host. April is Alcohol Awareness Month. And throughout this month, Ask the Messengers has been bringing you programming that deals with alcohol, addictions, and bringing you answers to help. We're gonna talk with some real people who share their real stories. They're gonna talk about their addictions and how it impacted their lives. And then later, we're going to hear from some experts who will talk about the effects and impact of alcohol on the mind as well as the body. Let's go now to a real person sharing a real story. Um, it was heroin, fentanyl, and cocaine at the end of the road. At the beginning, I just started off with smoking weed and just drinking. I came from um, a, a pretty, a pretty good home. I wasn't, I didn't come from the streets and 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 actually all that. Like my my mom, I call like my family. My dad, my dad's side of the family was all was addicts. My mom's side of the family was not addicts. My mother has been rocking with me since, since the beginning. And no matter what, um, at, no matter what, like I could always count on her to, to talk to, to, um, cause when I was in treatment, like I called her my sponsor because I, in treatment, I didn't have a sponsor. I didn't have, I just had my mother. That's all I had when I was in treatment. Um, like, cause I, I didn't trust nothing. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't believe in anything. I just, I just like, I, I talked to my mom and my mom has been like my rock ever since I, I've ever since, ever since I was out on the streets using and, and the relationship is just, you know, my mom is still here for me to this day. And that's like the, my number one supporter. Um, she's always been, and I, and I feel also terrible because my mother also was the person that she didn't want to, she knew what I was doing, but she didn't want to believe it until she actually got the, the proof and actually saw with her own eyes. Then that's, yeah, that's when she had to keep her distance. And I understand at that time I was resentful, but but now, like, once I did some work, like, I understand um, that families have to, you know, you got to keep a, a safe distance. Um, the first drink I took, I can remember, I was in 10th grade. Um, I was hanging out with a bunch of seniors uh, from high school had, who had graduated that year. And we were uh, at a house party. And uh, the house party was very boring, so the seniors wanted to leave. And by me being kind of popular in high school, you know, I was a tennis player and stuff like that, they took me with them. And that was the first time I literally had a drink. I've tried many different drugs, and nothing ever was something I got addicted to or enjoyed. I just really fell for alcohol because it's legal. If I could say something to help anyone out there, I could say to remain abstinent from all drugs. Alcohol is a drug, and well, I binge drink, so binge drinking is more like it's really dangerous. And then the reality show is the same. They constantly, that's all you see. You know, they're out and about partying, and they're in social gatherings, and everybody's drinking. What was your drug of choice? Alcohol. And how old were you when you first picked up? 21. And how did it come about? Um, I had my first drink with a very, very pop, very popular, famous producer. Um, and I, t I just took that drink because I didn't want to say no at 21 years old. And how long did that last? 
Um, I drank from, well, I've been sober for six years, so I drank from 21, um, about, 10, about 10 years, 10 plus years, more than, maybe more. And what was the moment that brought you to your knees where you said, look, enough is enough, I need some help? I call it a spiritual awakening. One day I was just in my hotel room and um, I had like this overwhelming feeling to stop. Now it had been a few times where I told myself I was gonna slow down, you know, so I would, I would switch to like wine, only drink on the weekends. Anybody who's in recovery knows that does not work. You know what I mean? So one day I just had like this overwhelming feeling and I decided to stop. So I called everybody I loved and told them I was gonna stop. And I took all the steps to do it. You know, I went to the hospital, I went to the church, I went everywhere, you know what I mean? And I just, I haven't had a drink since. Okay, and if you could say something to save a little kid out there that's maybe thinking about using, what would you say to that kid? You know, we got this need, we got this over dying, deserving need to like fit in. Don't worry about fitting in, just be yourself. As soon as I laid back and I just decided to just be me and stand for just what I stand for and not follow the crowd, it's worked out well for me. Don't follow the crowd, don't just do things it's called peer pressure, you know what I mean? Don't, don't try to blend in with the crowd. You just be you. Just do you. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. After receiving a delinquent property tax bill for the two lots connected to my home, I was concerned. I didn't even know that I had a past due bill. I went down to the Wayne County Treasurer's Office and the staff worked with me to keep my property out of foreclosure. My property taxes became delinquent after I fell behind on my bills. Treasurer Sabri and his staff came to the town hall in my city and provided information about resources available to help me. At the meeting, I found out about payment plan options. Let us help you. Our goal is zero owner-occupied properties getting foreclosed and going to the auction. Come down to our office at 400 Monroe in downtown Detroit on the fifth floor. Call 313-224-5990 during our normal business hours from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and until 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. Or email textinfo at waynecounty.com for assistance. Take the first step. Contact our office today. It worked for us. Hi, I'm Ashley Greaser, the office manager at Premier Supportive Services. Here at Premier, we offer a variety of services that include residential service, 24-hour residential, attended care, semi-independent, as well as many other services. So if you know of anyone that has been involved in a car accident, we are located at 17555 James Cousin, Suite 2. Or you can give us a call at 313-345-3668. Changing an addict's life and providing support to the addict's family is the goal of the Live Right Structure Recovery Corps. Free yoga and spiritual recovery classes on Thursday, automotive maintenance class, and physical nutritional classes on Friday. Visit their new Residential Recovery Resource Center located at 27700 Gratiot Avenue in Roseville, Michigan. Live Right also accepts donations of cars, trucks, boats, and campers in any condition. For more information and a complete list of their events, go to their website at liverightstructuredcorp.com or call 586-217-5899. Life short, live right. Coming up on Ask the Messengers TV show. Number one, alcohol, and the rates of alcohol drinking are very high in college kids. Looking for the finest quality in men's clothing? Visit Compo Clothing, located in the heart of downtown Hamtramck since 1931. They carry a full line of suits, shoes, shirts, ties, and clergy robes. What sets Compo Clothing apart from other stores? The personal service, and they offer free alterations for life. They also have no charge layaway. Ask about their $98 suit sale. Compo Clothing, located at 9643 Joseph Compo. What was your drug of choice? I, my drug of choice was alcohol. And how old were you when you first started using? I didn't start drinking actually until I was about 19. And what, how did that come about? Um, well, I was using prescription pills before then, but I really did just fall in love with alcohol and the lifestyle that it brought. Um, so it got pretty bad around 20, 21. How old were you when you started using prescription drugs? About 15, 14. And how did you get a hold to it? They prescribed me medications, actually, like psychiatric medications that I never really wanted to take. And I realized pretty soon that I could get high off of them. And how did your using affect your relationship with your family? 
Well, there was actually about two or three years where I didn't talk to them at all just because we had some communication issues. I had done some crappy things and they didn't want to talk to me anymore. So I was on my own for that time. Okay. So if it was a little girl out there watching and you can help save her, what would you say to her? Your family is your lifeline. Uh, they're always going to be there with you. And when we get older, we start to realize that those relationships are what's really important. You know, the friends come and go, but the family is always there. But some people don't want help. And little Walker, I didn't want no help. I didn't want to hear it. The drugs that are most frequently abused by college students are, number one, alcohol. And the rates of alcohol drinking are very high in college kids. When kids take uh, drink alcohol, it is not uncommon for them to mix them with other substances. And in particularly in college kids, what has become more of a fashion is to mix alcohol with energy, energy drinks that have very, very high content of caffeine. And so this uh, sort of counteracts a little bit the sedative effects, but can have very adverse physiological effects. And in, inst in some instances, it can actually be dangerous. And the other drugs that they frequently abuse also are stimulant medications. And they use them not just to get high, but they also use them with the belief that it's going to help them study for exams. So that actually leads to very frequent utilization of drugs like uh, specifically amphetamine Adderall. Another common drug abused by uh, teenagers and college kids is marijuana. And in many instances, actually, it is uh, accepted passively by the parents because they themselves may have used marijuana when they were young and they felt that it didn't have any ill effects on them. The other reality about marijuana is that the potency of the marijuana that is currently available in the market is much, much stronger than the potency of the marijuana that was available to the parents. So in 2000, the content of the active ingredient, which actually is what makes people high, was 4%. Now the regular average content is at least 12%. And, and you have varieties that go for 20, 25%. And the higher the content of the THC, the greater its addictiveness. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. Hi, my name is Brenda Owens. I work at Greensboro Hair Collection, and I love doing hair. I've been doing it for almost 30 years now, actually. And I do a little bit of everything. This doll right here is a pin curl. This is my weekly client, Lanise, short and sassy. She just got a fresh haircut last week. The name of the salon is Greensboro Hair Collection. We're located on Greenfield between Otter Drive and Curtis. I'm on the second level. My name is Brenda. My phone number is 313-729-8194. Give me a call. I love what I do. We're back. We're going to go now and hear some more real stories from real people as they share their stories of alcohol and addiction. What was your drug of choice? Alcohol. I had 18 years clean when I relapsed for one, like two hours, I smoked some crack and picked up again. And how old were you when you first picked up any drug? I was five years old. And how were you so easy to get a hold to it at five? Because my mother and them used to keep beer in the refrigerator. Sometimes people say you have spiritual awakenings. Did you have any spiritual awakenings while you was? Yes, I did. How I blew my clean time from not having boundaries. What do you do to stay clean today? I meditate. I follow simple suggestions. I'm giving myself a break. Crack cocaine is my first drug of choice, and then it turned into alcohol. I was tired of not being the cool kid. I was the only black person in my brigade, and everybody else was doing it, and I just wanted to be cool like them. My clean date is January 21st, 2018. Um, just in and out of jail, treatment centers, uh, coming back home and not being able to leave the house without my daughter asking me when I'm going to be back and crying and stuff like that. I saw how it was affecting her and uh, instead of getting sentenced to treatment 
I took myself there that time and have been clean since. I would just say, if you're built anything like me, then it will progress, progress, progress. You know, I started smoking weed and drinking and next thing I knew I was selling my daughter's things. I don't know how I got there, but I know I started smoking weed and drinking. Uh, my sponsor kept saying, you need to go to treatment. I said, I don't need no treatment. But all the time I did need treatment and not knowing it and just wasn't willing to go at the time. But um, my bottom pretty much was I was just sick and tired of self. And I just was losing everything that I had been losing, just everything. So I went to treatment. Worst they using was mm, being drunk, I guess, and being beat up. Getting drunk, being beat up, having stitches, going to the hospital. That was pretty much my worst days. And when it was time for you, when you hit your bottom, how did you know where to go get help from? My sponsor and other people in the fellowship, because I had been in the fellowship before. So pretty much I knew who to call and where to go. The first time I started doing drugs was the summer before ninth grade i i drank i smoked weed and i smoked crack for the first time i grew up in uh south jersey south new jersey and access to drugs was pretty easy uh, they have open air drug markets where drug sets where you just pretty much if you have money you can get anything you want and they didn't discriminate on who they sold to either it could be a kid or a 90 year old man after high school, when drugs got really heavy, I was able to maintain during high school, party, party on the weekends, and uh, keep it kind of um, under control. But once I graduated high school, I was just off the hook. And I remember 13 years ago, uh, 13 years ago on Christmas Day, my father called me asking where my stepmother's wedding ring was. And it just destroyed me, because me and my father had a great relationship growing up. Uh, all through my childhood and that that really hurt me you know but it wasn't enough hurt to make me stop you knew the risks when you decided to drive drunk there could be a crash people could get hurt or killed You could get arrested, but one thing's for sure, you were wrong when you said it was no big deal. Understanding the Disease of Addiction by Blaine Burks. One of the most prevalent disorders uh, in our society today is substance abuse. And a lot of people really don't understand how the disease of addiction works. I know that a lot of families are uh, discombobulated and messed up, especially by older people that just feel like it's just simply a matter of just quitting. Uh, that Nancy Reagan came out with that slogan called, uh, just say no. But the disease of addiction is a lot deeper. They call it, it's cunning, it's powerful, and it's baffling, uh, especially to those individuals that don't seem to be afflicted by this disorder. Uh, it causes an individual to turn into somebody that they entirely was not raised to be. Uh, a lot of people, when they have a problem with drugs and alcohol, uh, especially alcohol, which a lot of people feel like in this society is not a problem because it's legal. And now we have marijuana uh, that has now become legal. So a lot of people are saying that marijuana doesn't cause a problem. But the biggest drug problem in the United States or uh, in the world is caused by alcoholism. I didn't even know alcohol was a drug. You know, I was still around here playing around, catching DUI, drunk driving, open and taxing. I've been drinking since I was about two years old. You know, I was raised with them folks on the Delta, you know, where you're teething and stuff. They put whiskey on your gums and stuff like that. Alcoholism has destroyed more 
individuals and families that all of the substances, uh, cocaine, heroin, uh, uh, marijuana, all of those substances that are um, uh, problems uh, together. So alcohol is something that people, even though it's sociably acceptable, should really be looked at uh, the impact that it has on the individual and the impact thus it has on the uh, individual's family. Uh, a lot of people uh, feel like, well, uh, alcohol is not a drug, it's legal. So they rationalize uh, the use of the alcohol because it's socially prevalent. But the reality is alcohol causes more damage to the body physiologically, to the liver, to the kidney, and it causes brain disorders because alcohol affects the brain, which kills brain cells, which are an organism that doesn't reproduce itself. So uh, people have to understand, or uh, try to understand, a lot of the different things that go on uh, with an individual that once they reach a certain stage in their use, they become addicted to the substance and therefore change the whole course of an individual's life. Getting drunk doesn't make you cool. Alcohol kills. You use it too much, you lose the thrill and get chills. Avoid it, don't toy it. Drinking disables thinking, don't drink. Don't drink the liquid or you'll be addicted. Mind clouded and conflicted. And in a few years, you may be convicted. P.S. Don't fall under peer pressure. Don't mess your life up, it's not worth it. Be smart, stay in control. Real men stay sober. Real women do too. This has been a PSA brought to you by NCADD to bring awareness to underage drinking. There is help for today and hope for tomorrow. Changing an addict's life and providing support to the addict's family is the goal of the Live Right Structure Recovery Corp. Free yoga and spiritual recovery classes on Thursday, automotive maintenance class, and physical nutritional classes on Friday. Visit their new residential recovery resource center located at 27700 Gratiot Avenue in Roseville, Michigan. Live Right also accepts donations of cars, trucks, boats, and campers in any condition. For more information and a complete list of their events, go to their website at LiveRightStructuredCorp.com or call 586-217-5899. Life short. Live right. After receiving a delinquent property tax bill for the two lots connected to my home, I was concerned. I didn't even know that I had a past due bill. I went down to the Wayne County Treasurer's Office and the staff worked with me to keep my property out of foreclosure. My property taxes became delinquent after I fell behind on my bills. Treasurer Sabri and his staff came to the town hall in my city and provided information about resources available to help me. At the meeting, I found out about payment plan options. Let us help you. Our goal is zero owner-occupied properties getting foreclosed and going to the auction. Come down to our office at 400 Monroe in downtown Detroit on the fifth floor. Call 313-224-5990 during our normal business hours from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and until 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. Or email textinfo at waynecounty.com for assistance. Take the first step. Contact our office today. It worked for us. Alcohol has a powerful impact, not only on the person who's using, but also on the person who in their family, because many of them are, uh, they, they lose their jobs, they, they no longer can do the things they ought to do for their families. And so it becomes not only uh, that the person is struggling, but also the individual. And as we reflected over the Today Show, it, we, we just simply showed you that people's lives were changed and impacted as a result of them taking that first drink. And, and that's all it takes, is the first drink starts you down that road. Uh, so uh, and then there's, th th there's this mindset, and as a pastor, I, I often have people who ask me, uh, is it okay to drink? Jesus drank wine, uh, he turned water into wine. Uh, but the point is, is that when Jesus did that, it wasn't for the purpose of people getting uh, intoxicated. In fact, that same Savior said in the scriptures that we ought to be filled with the Spirit and not drunk with wine. And so he spoke about moderation. He spoke about responsibility. He spoke about not only uh, that, it, that, it, that it, it, if you drink, that it, is, it has to be in moderation. 
And so uh, as a pastor, I just want to share this with you. And this is my thought is that whatever we do, we have to be aware of not only the impact that it has on us, but also on the impact that it will have on others and those coming behind us because children are watching us. Uh, we're examples to somebody. And if that's the case, who are we impacting? Whose life is being is changed as a result of us taking that drink? And so I just admonish you to be mindful of what you do, when you do it, and how you do it. Because not only are lives impacted, but also uh, lives uh, change as a result of alcohol addictions. And so I would simply like to leave you with this thought. Love is what love does. And we here at Ask the Messengers, we want to love you to life. Until next time. Thank you for tuning in to Ask the Messengers. Do you have a recovery story? Well, we'd like to hear it. Please visit our website and email us with your story because we love to share it with those who are in need. Also, if you have a question that you'd like for us to answer on the air, please send us your question in our inbox and we would be glad to answer it, no matter what you have on your heart. And then we ask all of you, please follow us on social media. Thanks again for tuning in to Ask the Messengers. We'll see you next time. Won't you help us to do exactly what our motto is, and that is to help save lives. Won't you send a generous donation to the information there on the screen? We would love to have you as part of our partnership to help save lives. Uh, you may not be able to go out in the street, you may not be able to go come here to the show, but you can send your donation that helps us save lives. You, we invite you to come to any of our meetings that is held here at our facility here on Schaefer. You absolutely are welcome. We have a Wednesday meeting from 5 to 7 p.m. and then also a Friday meeting that goes from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Our prayers and our sympathy go out to those who have lost loved ones as a result of their battle with addictions. Though they may not be with us physically, their light will forever shine within the spirits and within those family members who have been left behind. Ask the messengers, we offer these prayers up for you. And how long have you been in the recovery process? I've been in recovery 22 years now. It's been 15 years and some months now. 18 years. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference.